בוקר טוב חברים, זה מוקדם מאוד, אני קום מוקדם מאוד בבוקר, חד בבוקר. Good morning my friends, it's very early this morning, I got up early this morning and um, I actually tried to do this video the other day and release it and I apologize, I had some technical difficulties in doing so. Uh, just some things that the Lord has laid on my heart that I want to share with you. And it kind of deals with, um, from uh, Genesis. Uh, of course, again, I've been in Genesis quite a while now, but the Lord had laid on my heart a little while back to go back and read the story of uh, Jacob, where he sees the ladder, the vision, in Genesis chapter 28, for those that you, of you that may want to follow this. And it's laid on my heart for, for some time, and it took me a little bit to get over there to do that, but when I did... Uh, I kept reading it over and over and over, and because I couldn't figure out why did the Lord want me to read this, and finally the Holy Spirit revealed it to me why that He wanted me to read this. Um, but actually, before I go into that, I want to just share with you a little thought that hit me uh, yesterday. Uh, I'm driving down the road, uh, going in in the morning to work, and uh, I was listening to the news and all the different things of people that are going against Israel and I thought to myself, you know, surely God will just obliterate this country uh, and not only the United States but many other countries for the evil in which they do against Israel. The, the turn that the administration and many of the politicians that have turned against Israel in this country uh, not only politicians, but of course there's many peoples, churches even, that are against Israel. And I just couldn't help but think how that God will bring such a judgment upon this nation. And right when I thought that, it, the Holy Spirit came in the car and put in my heart, No, I will bring them to Jerusalem for judgment. And that blew me away. And as soon as the Holy Spirit put this in my heart, I realized he's right because he gathers all the nations to Jerusalem for judgment and he brings them there for dividing the land of Israel. So the dividing of the land of Israel is inevitable, but there again, God will bring the judgment and that'll break in that midst of that week, that last week. So anyway, I thought you might like that. That was a blessing to my heart. This is very important, what I'm going to say here to you. It may seem very, <clears throat> very um, insignificant, but I feel in my heart this is probably one of the greatest revelations that God has ever given me, um, especially for my brethren, uh, the Jewish people. I think for my Jewish brethren, my rab rabbinical friends, this is very important for you to hear this. It is an answer to something that we have not ever been able to quite figure out. And as well for the Christian, uh, it's an answer to something that Christians could not quite figure out either in uh, words that Jesus spoke when he was here on earth. Uh, but I'm going to take you right to where God asked, put a place in my heart to go into uh, Bereshit for the Jews. Bereshit, uh, oh goodness, where are we at here? Bereshit uh, Tetvav is the chapter that we're going to, and uh, um, we'll begin to read over here, probably around uh, Yod Gimel. Uh, so for, for the Christians, chapter 28, this is in the Torah, uh, verses, uh, oh, well, we're going to go to about verse yeah, 13, Yod, Yod Gimel. <clears throat> he says, and behold, Hashem was standing over him, uh, and, and I know that there's many people that don't like that when I say uh, Hashem, uh, especially there's a lot of Messianic brothers, sisters that watch this video. Let me say this to you, those of you that have that issue there. You have to understand, in Zephaniah, in chapter 3, verse 9, I believe it's where it's at, that's where God speaks about how that he will restore a pure language and we would once again, the people would be able to call upon the name of Hashem. Um, many say Yahweh. Yahweh is an incorrect pronunciation, by the way. Uh, there is no way for us to know. Uh, if you say Jehovah, um, 
that's just deplorable. That, that, that name has got so much bad part in there in trying to say that. And it's as God says, do not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. And, but he promises to restore it, and he gives us the time frame in which he'll restore it. And that is actually when we're in that last week uh, where God actually brings all the nations down to judgment. So it's kind of interesting that he placed this on my heart earlier the other day about the judgment of the nations. This is when he comes and restores that name. Now, do the two witnesses come and begin to restore the name? I don't know. Is it when Moshiach actually reveals himself to them? For sure by then, no doubt it'll be. And uh, Gary Skagabo, a good friend of mine, he made the comment when I first uh, spoke to him about that. He said, that's interesting. He says, because it says in um, Revelation that Jesus has a new name, a name which no man can say but he himself. And he wondered if that could not possibly be God's divine name. I, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. But anyway, let's go back to this here. So anyway, so I say Hashem and it's really burning in my own heart because I'm like before the Lord day and night about this. God, I need to know your name. I want to know how to say your name. Uh, so it really matters a lot to me as well. And so it says, And behold, Hashem was standing over him, and he said, I am Hashem, God of Abraham your father and God of Isaac. The ground upon which you are lying, to you will I give it and to your descendants. Your offspring shall be as the dust of the earth. Actually, in the Hebrew, it's seed. Uh, uh, Wait a minute, excuse me. I want to say something wrong to you here. Let me get this right here. But uh, but anyway, Ula Zaracha, Zaracha is the word seed in Hebrew. Uh, to your offspring as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread out powerfully westward, eastward, northward, and southward, and all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you and by your offspring or by your seed. Behold, I am with you, and I will guard you wherever you go. And I will return you to this soil, for I will not forsake you until I have done what I have spoken about you. Now, the fascinating thing is here is God says here, for I will not forsake you or to leave you. And that's from the Hebrew word, uh, azav. And in Hebrew here, he says, ki lo uh, azavach, azavach. I'm sorry, I'm getting my I'm not speaking Hebrew well this morning. Uh, it's literally putting the word forsaken in the future. It's uh, the Aleph in the front of the uh, Ezav is putting that in the word in future as a So he's not going to forsake you until a certain time, and that time will be after all these things are fulfilled. For he says, For I will not forsake you until I have done what I have spoken about you. Okay, so he says, and what did he speak about him? He said he would have this uh, offspring or the seed as a dust of the earth, and, and they would spread out powerfully westward, eastward, northward, and southward, and the families of all the earth shall, be, shall, be, shall bless themselves by you and by your offspring. Now, the offspring that would be a blessing to all the earth would be Moshiach ben David, which is the seed of David, which is naturally it's Jacob's seed, it's his descendants. And so therefore, when God said he would not forsake him until this be done, it is obviously a prophetic word. And even the rabbis, uh, Rambam and Rashi, all of them recognize that this is definitely prophetic words that are coming from, from the mouth of God speaking here to, to Jacob, because how could, how could this be fulfilled in his own lifetime. It was impossible. In fact, we cannot find an instance really and truly where Jacob was ever forsaken by God. And of course, naturally, the spreading of the offspring was something that happened after his own lifetime. So this forsaken, uh, and, and, it's, and it's, it is inevitable. You have to understand this. This is something that is inevitable. It will happen. Because God says, Ki lo, for... I will not forsake you until, odd, odd is until, until, um, um, excuse me here, 
until I have uh, until I've done what I've spoken about you. Okay, so Asher la diberti lecha. So he's going to do it. God promised that he would do it. But the problem is, is if Jacob is not going to be alive when all this is being fulfilled in the first place, how is God and when is God going to forsake Jacob? Now, we have to then look at the fact that God changes his name after he wrestles with God and he becomes Israel. And then the nation of Israel becomes a people. We become a people called Israel. And that is what they're referred to the rest of their lives is Israel or the sons of Israel. And even to this day, as Israel has been regathered again as a nation, they are called Israel. And so therefore, when God then speaks that he's going to forsake him, and it's going to be after a time where all nations have been blessed, then it has to deal with Israel. So now God is talking about forsaking or leaving Israel at a certain time. And as I mentioned to you, Moshiach ben David has to come as well because it talks about you know, God says that, um, behold, I am with you and I will guard you wherever you go. And I will, wait a minute, let me back up just a little bit further. further. And, um, and all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you and by your offspring. So the seed, they're going to be blessed by the seed. And we know that that's Moshiach. So it has to come that Moshiach, and this is mainly for my Jewish brethren, we can see by the very writing right here by Moses, Moshe tells us that all the families of the earth will be blessed by the seed, and we know the only way that can happen is through Moshiach ben David. So therefore, Moshiach must come before Israel is forsaken. And so when I read this, I could not help. I mean, immediately it came to my soul the very words that I heard when I read in the Christian Bible where Jesus is himself, Yeshua, he's on the cross dying and suddenly he says in an unknown tongue, he didn't say it in Hebrew, but in, they have in the uh, transliteration of the uh, King James Bible, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, Okay, um, and then they translate this out and they say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And when I read those words and just rehearsing it back in my mind, I recognize, oh my gosh, is this not so? This is the very fulfillment of Jacob's own words. When God says, or not Jacob's words, but God's words, Hashem saying to Jacob, that he would not forsake him until this certain time. And it inevitably, Moshiach had come, Moshiach had died, and it wasn't, even the Christians have never understood, why did this man, Yeshua, make the comment, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why did he say such a word when God had not forsaken him? You know, God had not left him. We can't really say that God ever left him. But he was fulfilling the very words of God when the seed had finally come that would bless all the nations. And it was through his death that the Christian, the life that was inside of Yeshua, would be poured out upon the people, to the Jews first and to the Gentiles secondly. That's how all the nations were blessed because life was going to be restored, eternal life. But at the same time, Israel was going to be forsaken. They were going to be left. Why? Because they rejected the Messiah. And my brethren, don't feel so guilty or bad that we rejected him because we were born for the purpose to offer sacrifice for sin. And Moshiach was going to be that sacrifice. And so I want to bring to you also in the Psalm of David, and I know many of you, my brethren, you look at this and, oh, this is, not, this is not this man, Yeshua. But nonetheless, we must read. He says, my God, my God, Psalm 22, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? You know, everything here, watch what he says. Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou 
hurtest me not in the night season, and I'm not silent, but thou art holy. Oh, thou that, tr that, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee and trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were, and were confounded. But I am a worm, no man, a reproach of men and despised of people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, that was where they spit on him, you see. He trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him seeing he delighteth in him. And we know that those words were actually spoken about uh, Jesus when he was on the cross. But thou art in that, but thou art the he that took out of the womb and didst make me hope of when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb and thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me for trouble is near for there is none to help. Many bulls have, uh, have compassed me Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as ravening and roaring lion. I'm getting to a point. That's why I keep reading here. Excuse me here just for a moment. I am out like water and all my bones are out of joint. Not broken. Notice that. Not broken. Out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shred and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws that thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. That's the Gentile Roman soldiers that were around her. Remember, he said that, told the little woman that was a Gentile, he says, not meet for me to give you the children's bread to dogs. And she said, it's truth, Lord, but thou, you know, the dogs eat the crumb under the master's table. So he said, dogs have compassed me about. Some of the Gentiles of the wicked and have enclosed me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Who pierced his hands and his feet? The dogs, the Gentiles pierced his hands and his feet. The Roman soldiers. Mm. And, uh, and, and I may tell all my bones there, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. And that's exactly what the Roman soldiers did. But be thou not uh, far from me, O Lord. There's something I want to get to here. We're almost there. Strength, uh, O my strength, has ha uh, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword and my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare my, thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Here it is. Yea, they fear the Lord. Praise him. And ye, have, and ye the seed of Jacob, uh, glorify him and fear him, all ye seed of Israel. There it is. He goes back and he refers you back to the very seed to the time when God is telling Jacob, all this must be fulfilled. Your seed will spread out. You're there. You're, you're together together. And he's calling, calling it Israel. And he's calling Jacob, brings those two names together again. And Jacob, God says to Jacob, I will not forsake you until all this be fulfilled. All that is spoken is fulfilled. And here the fulfillment is going to be... David in the psalm even shows you when it'll be fulfilled. And so that's why Jesus, Yeshua, says these actual words. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And it was from that moment that Hashem left us as a people. And But notice, even, even Yeshua, Jesus, when he's standing on over the mount of, uh, over Jerusalem, and he looks down and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. He said, your house is left unto you desolate. That means God will leave you until, odd, until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of Hashem. So there does come a time. This is why we're gathered as a nation. This is why the prophecy said that both the house of Judah and the house of Israel will once again dwell together. See, he was sent to only the lost sheep of Israel. Now, unfortunately, the lost sheep of Israel was not there at the time. Only uh, Benjamin, Judah, and the, and the Levites were there in Israel at the time, and the Samaritans. So God is going to finish his ministry. He's going to finish his ministry to the Jews, to, all, to the house of Israel as well. So we have to be returned there again. And, we're, and he leaves Jacob. He departs from him at a specific time. And that time is when Moshiach 
was going to be crucified. David pointed it out in the Psalm. God said it to Jacob in the beginning and Jesus fulfilled it on Calvary. It was fulfilled. And now we're in that time in between where Hashem is away from us as a people, but he's gathered us again. And how, when does he return to us? When we recognize who Moshiach ben David is. Then the spirit of God can be poured out upon us. Notice, isn't it interesting? With, with, when Moshiach ben David, he breathed upon them. I always thought this was fascinating. He said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Breathes upon them and says this. You know, why did he do this? Why did he do like that? Do you not realize he's trying to show you who he is? Because in Genesis, when he breathed into the nostrils, you know, nishmat chayim, he breathed that life, a plural form of the form of life of Yahweh into the very nostrils of that body he had created called Adam. And when he breathed in there, he breathed in not just one life of God, but more than one life of God. Why? Because Adam and Eve both were in that body. He breathed the Holy Spirit into them. He gave them life of God. And when Yeshua is standing here talking to them and he breathed upon them and he says, receive you the Holy Ghost. He didn't receive it right then, but he was showing that he breathed it on you so that you can receive it. My God, recognize who he is. Even you Gentiles, you don't know who your own Savior is. You claim to know him and don't know him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What do you think the name Hashem means? It's I was, I am, and I will ever be. Yeshua, Jesus, claimed to be the I am. Why? Because he was the very present tense of life here. In the beginning was the word. What was the first word spoke from the mouth of God that we see in Genesis? You know? Be'yomad Elohim. Yahi Od. The first thing was light and then not the sun. It was the light of God. You need to wake up of who this is. Jesus is not some third person or second person or something like that. It's God manifested in flesh, tangibles. It's just the, it's the very present tense of God in the, in the dimension that we live in. But he said, I come from God. I go back to God. Oh my gosh, people, recognize who, who is in your midst. Do you, rec do you think the Jews, when they recognize Moshiach, that they're going to recognize a second God? And the Hashem will be nothing? They're going to recognize who he is for what he is. That's why Jesus himself claimed to be, he says, he tells the Jews, he said, except that you believe that I am. Doesn't say I am he, he. Look in your Bible, it's added in the Greek language, he. He doesn't even exist there. He said that before Moses or before Abraham was, he says, to, he says I am. And they realized that the Jews had more sense to who he claimed to be at that time. They said, you're a man over 50 years old and say you've seen Abraham. And then he said, before Abraham was, I am. He claimed to be the one that spoke to Moses in the burning bush. What was in the burning bush? It says, Eshanai. It is fire, light. It was the Yahi Od speaking there. And according to Moses, he wrote that it was Yahweh, it was Hashem that spoke from the midst of that rock. People, recognize your day and the hour you're living in because you're missing it. And the Jewish people, you will find out, let that revival break out in Israel. I don't care how many churches send their missionaries over there, you will not convert Israel the way you're doing. You may win a few Jews here and there to Christ, but what are you winning them to? Win them to the Word. This is why he sends two witnesses. It doesn't say two Baptists, two Methodists, two Presbyterians, two Pentecostals, or two anything else. Because they're going to witness who Hashem really is. That's what they're going to do. Anyway, God bless you. I, I trust this is a blessing to you. It's a blessing to my heart. God bless you richly. May your day be filled with the joy of Hashem. And may you glorify Yeshua HaMashiach ben David where he truly is, the God of Israel manifested in flesh.